Okay, I've done a bunch of more um, trimming only with the uh, the punch and taken a few more flakes off. So right now we're about the thickness we want. We just need a, a few more full length flakes along these ridges and, uh, and then we'll put the flutes on it and then we'll have a nice western style Clovis. Right now it's fairly ordered and we're pretty good shape. Where the flakes don't go all the way across, they're, they're bold and they're going pretty far. So Right now this punch is working good and this material is cooperating so hopefully it'll continue that way. I really haven't done a good job of talking about how I'm working in between these flakes and flaking alternately, but I'll, I'll probably have to do that in another video. So right now, I, I should have started on a smaller Clovis. These bigger ones are tricky because obviously it's a nice rock and you don't want to break it, and it's sort of distracting me from being able to explain everything. The more you have to concentrate. That Clovis I did with the Hammerstone earlier was just autopilot and this is this isn't quite so easy so I'm separating in between these large flakes I can separate and build body now create these spurs which you can either leave like they did on some of the Wenatchees or you can uh, keep on flaking and we're not ready to stop yet so Knowing when to stop on these things is the is really tricky because some of these, like the thin cash points, a lot of the edge properties on those things you could, I mean, they're unrefined, they're kind of heavy. I mean, you could keep on napping on those things all day long, but you wouldn't have that effect. So, a lot of these clovises out there that aren't that are more medially controlled and, and they don't have full length flaking all on them, we're just they. They were probably had full like flaking the stage right before, and then they sort of just took the edges down and kept on going with them. Oops. Flake. Mm Now here's one where you just, you have to get it. You've got a nice ridge and you've got some body here. And you really have to get that flake to go all the way across. There's just, there's no excuse if you don't. There, 
that did pretty good. And we feathered out there and it would have been I know it's appearing to be, you know, acting like a ninny complaining that it didn't, but I would like that that just gone a little bit further. So But that was pretty good. Um let's see here. Too bad this thing in red, white, and blue. This is really sort of a boring rock. It's gonna be a, probably end up being a really nice point on a sort of boring color, but it kind of looks like a patinated alabates. The fleck in there, even though it's Burlington. Sometimes when I chip Burlington and I'm making a Western material, I kind of pretend it's a something else. Because obviously we don't always have access to the ma correct material. Okay, now here's a thick base. So I'm going to go ahead and do some basal thinning. And I'm probably going to use that leg anvil and use the punch. Because if I work it here, it's, it's awful big. I could fold this point in half. So I'll go ahead and show you how I do the tip anvil. And before I take a few more big flakes off this blade, I'm going to want to flute it because... I don't want to break this thing. Using the let to turn this edge down a little bit. Actually, if I work low angle, I can probably get away with doing this right now if I find a corner here. Wrapping it up in leather helps sometimes. I'm gonna have to pick this thing up and I'm going to pushing it right into my leg, coming up here. I'm gonna hit it with the the billet. Just because that's what I'm used to striking it with. Sometimes my smaller punch, that's what I'll do. I'll use the smaller one to set up a platform. These are just like little guides. 